good dog drinking in the lap of my partner after all day work. Well, good morning, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. And today is going to be a busy day because today is my very last day in Los Angeles before I go to Budapest. Yep, that's right. Tomorrow we take off. We're going to have a long flight to Munich. And then we're going to end up in Budapest, Hungary. And I can't wait. I've been so excited for this trip. Ever since I booked it, it's going to be a blast. But today, we got to get a lot of stuff done. I want to clear off my phone, get all the files off my memory, so I have to finally finish Michael's wedding video. I've been procrastinating on the very last chunk of it just because it's there's so much to it. But I'm going to tackle it today, get it done, get it finished, get it sent over to Breck so you can put it on a DVD. I'm going to do our vlog. I'm going to try and run some last minute errands. I'm going to try and get that haircut I was trying to do yesterday and hopefully get all this stuff done. Maybe even do a live chat with you guys. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I think we can get it all done and throughout that whole time, I gotta figure out a way to make sure that Jaw feels loved since he's gonna be hanging out with Kevin for the next week. So, days with Jordan the Lion, all the millions of things that we gotta do today, finishing up Michael's video, recording a new one, all that stuff begins now. Yep, this is for sure gonna be a crazy day, guys. Buckle your seatbelts. There's one of the headquarters for the Suicide Girls. So he and I spent most of the night last night making my maps and dividing up my days, making a schedule for things I'm going to do, where and when. Total gentleman, as always. What are you doing? So as for my car and my engine, my grandpa and you guys have actually given me some pretty good ideas of things I might want to have a mechanic check out that it could possibly be. So I think I'm going to wait until I get back to do that. I just don't have the time to do it um, today. And I got to put my car away for my trip and all that stuff. So I just don't think I would have time. Thank you for all the suggestions. I'm going to do that as soon as I get back. I have to. And uh, just assess where I'm at from there. And I'm totally losing my voice. This is such a bummer. The duck is smoking. Well, Lionhearts, here we are. That Walgreens building that you see behind me is now a raised building. But what used to be there at one time was the very first specialized record store in all of the United States and the largest record store in the entire world. You see, before this whole complex was here, and before there was ever an Amoeba Records, or even a Tower Records, in 1940, like I said, it was the largest record store ever opened and the very first specialized store. Before that, you would always buy your records at a mom and pop general store, but this was the first store that actually specialized in carrying music. And from 1940 till 1978, a man named Glenn and Clyde Wallach opened this record store. This record store also in the very top section right here on the second floor. In 1942, just down the street, Glenn Wallach was partners with Johnny Mercer. And they formed Capitol Records. And then in 1946, on that second floor, they actually moved the offices of Capitol Records over to here. Before moving eventually up the street to the Capitol Tower that we all know in 1956, which you can faintly see off in the distance. Now what was great about this record store is they were innovative in every single way. They sold beyond records, they sold every kind of record, you know, they had 45s, 33 and a half, 78s, you could buy sheet music, you could buy concert tickets, you could buy 
eight tracks, you could get cassettes, you could buy just about everything here, including televisions and musical instruments. But this store was innovative in the way that they were the very first store to put records in cellophane so that they couldn't be stolen or pilfered through. They were the first record store to make listening booths where you paid a small fee to go in and you could listen to the record before you bought it. This was also a record store that, since it was owned by a man who started Capitol Records and it was at one time, Capitol was up here and beyond that, Capitol was down there, you could come in here and find all of the Capitol recording artists. At any given time, you could come in and you could find Nat King Cole, Judy Garland, Bing Crosby walking around, and even later on in life, one of my favorite musicians of all time actually was a store clerk here. If you can imagine it, you could walk in these doors and you'd see a young, hairy-faced Frank Zappa work in the counter. Now, Wallach's was also really innovative in the regard that they were the very first record store to come up with the idea of creating a Rolodex-style display case so that you could actually look through the covers of the album jackets without actually having to pull the album out. Now, one of the things that they also figured out pretty early on was that they had a young audience clientele, and especially with the Palladium being just a block away, which was a great concert venue, Wallach's was the first record store to actually stay open until 2 a.m. to cater to the after concert clientele. And wow, I mean, what a legacy. Now they said that the reason they ended up going out of business in 1978 was basically chains like Tower and Camelot Music and Music Towns and all the record stores would pop up all over the country in every strip mall and every place you can imagine and it just became a lot easier to get music. But if you go online, you go on YouTube, you can actually look up Wallach's Music Store and Mel Blanc, the voice of all of our favorite um, Bugs Bunny characters and all the memorable Warner Brothers characters, he's actually doing a commercial inside this store. And in 1956, when Capitol Records moved out of here, some of you music fans may know Dot Records, they moved their offices into the second floor here. Now, like I said, this is not the original building. You can tell by the photos that I posted, showing you some of the older versions of what Wallach's look like. Since I've been here, I actually saw them raise the building, so I know that it's not the same one, but wow, to think of a legend once was here, and once again, no plaque, no remembrance, no nothing. So I guess this vlog would also not only be a Music City vlog, but this would also be a History of Capitol Records vlog. Kind of funny to think about Frank Zappa working in there in 1965 and some of the music legends that he would have had to wait on before he himself became a legend. I won't be needing those for a week at least. Well, I'm home and I think I talked myself out of a haircut because I went ahead and grabbed my own clippers and started going at it myself and I think I got it pretty well trimmed up to where I'm cool with it and I think it'll last me another couple of weeks. Because for the most part, it looks okay. There's just a few trouble areas, so this sucker took care of it. What the heck are you doing? I'm sitting over here editing the video, and I turn around and I look, and this is what I see. What are you doing? What are you doing, you crazy bird? Hi. Hi! You're not even wagging your tail? Well, I saw online where they say like if you're going out for the nightlife in Budapest, you should really dress for it. And I'm thinking of maybe going to an opera or um, one of the traditional dances at the Heritage Hall there. So I'm bringing my uh, suit jacket from the wedding, a blue shirt, and uh, actually my pink tie from the wedding, even though it looks like uh, white on here. It's actually pinkish. 
taking this dude over to Tailwaggers and I'm gonna buy him his favorite treat so he'll have it when he goes over to Kevin's house for the next couple of days. Of course. He eats everything, right? Oh yeah, he'll eat everything. Baby, baby, baby. <laughs> this one's got two. Ja, this one's got two. Do you want these? Well, good evening, Lionhearts. Thank you to those of you who had the time and came on and participated in the live chat tonight. It was fun to talk to all of you and catch up, and thank you for all the well wishes for my trip and for my car and all that nonsense. It was really nice of all of you. I'm going to call it a night. I wanted to thank uh, Tommy Burton for becoming my newest Patreon, and thank you all for coming and seeing me today and taking this ride with me. Tomorrow we take off for another adventure to Budapest, and I can't wait. It's going to be a blast, and uh, you're going to be getting a lot of content coming your way from there. Um, it might even be content overload, but you know what? Who cares? Those of you who want to see it, you can watch it, and we can all enjoy it. So have a great night, guys. I'll see you all tomorrow. I'm going to do a quick vlog tomorrow before I go flying away because I found out the hard way last time that I couldn't really do an upload from the airport. So... I'm not going to include any of that footage on tomorrow's vlog, but uh, have a great night. I'll see you all tomorrow, and uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye. I was sitting sticking like a good dog, drinking in the lap of my farmer after all day working. So dated, I work all day today. Oh, waking my head is aching, loving pink sky, thank God I'm found.